the normal distribution. The normal distribution is used to model the distribution of the values of a continuous variable. It has two parameters, the mean mu and the variance sigma square. The mean, median, and mode of the normal distribution are all equal to each other. It is unimodal. The normal distribution is symmetric about the mean, and the range is minus infinity to plus infinity. The probability density function of the normal distribution, written as small f of x, is shaped like a bell, as you can see in this figure. The mathematical expression for f of x is 1 by sigma square root of 2 pi into e raised to the power of minus half x minus mu by sigma, the whole square. Now, in real life, the normal distribution is applied very often to estimate the probability that a variable will take values within some portion of its range. So, for example, the probability that x is less than or equal to some value x1 can also be mathematically written like this p of minus infinity less than x less than or equal to x1 is equal to capital F of x, the cumulative probability of x1, uh, or f is the cumulative distribution function. Now, this represents or is represented by the area under the curve from minus infinity to x1 as shown in this figure here. You can see that the blue shaded region to the left of x1 is the area under the curve from minus infinity until x1. In the same manner, the probability that x lies between x1 and x2 is the area under the curve between x1 and x2 as shown here. And the probability that x is greater than x1 is p of x greater than or equal to x1, which is 1 minus capital F of x1. This is because uh, the area under the entire normal distribution curve is equal to 1. It represents the probability that x can take any value in its range. So this is indicated, this area under the curve here is indicated by the blue shaded region to the right of x1. Now, an interesting property of the normal distribution is that for any normally distributed variable x, regardless of its mean mu and standard deviation sigma, the probability that the variable will take values within one standard deviation on either side of its mean is 0.6827. In other words, 68.27% of the values of the variable which follows a normal distribution lie within one standard deviation uh, of the mean. Similarly, 95.45% of the values lie within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.73% of the values lie within three standard deviations of the mean. In fact, this property can be generalized uh, between any two points, which are p sigma and q sigma away from the mean. The probability that the variable will take value, a value between uh, p sigma from the mean and q sigma from the mean, P and Q can be either positive or negative or anything. Uh, this is a constant if we fix P and Q. For example, uh, let's say one point minus 1.2 sigma and 2.5 sigma. If you consider these two points, uh, the, the probability is 0.8787. Similarly, uh, between 1 sigma and 3 sigma, the probability is 0.1573. And between minus 2.8 sigma and 2.1 sigma, the probability is 0.9796. And these values, like all other possible values that you can create in this manner, are the same for any normal distribution, regardless of the mu and the sigma of that normal distribution. So this property helps us to generalize and calculate areas under the curve. Uh, more specifically, we take the help of what is called the standard normal distribution. Uh, the standard normal distribution makes it easy for us to compute uh, areas under the curve and thereby estimate the probabilities that we are looking for. So how do we do this? We first transform the variable x into another variable z. z is mathematically defined like this. z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. So if you look at this figure, uh, here is a normal distribution with a mean of 36 and a standard deviation of 1. Uh, and for each x, we can create a value of z uh, by using this formula. So you can see here, corresponding to these values of x listed here on the, on the x-axis, we have 
the values of z. For example, x equal to 36 corresponds to a value of z equal to 0, x equal to 37 is z equal to plus 1, x equal to 35 is z equal to minus 1, and so on. So z or zi represents the number of standard deviations that a given point xi is away from its mean. So for any x that follows a normal distribution, regardless of its mean and variance, the transform variable z will also follow a normal distribution, but with a mean of zero and variance one. In other words, the original normal distribution, regardless of whatever its mean and variance were, the transformed normal distribution, the standard normal distribution will have a mean of zero and a variance of one. And that is the reason why it's called the standard normal distribution. Now, this is extremely useful for us as we go forward. Let's do an example. The time in hours x required to load an ocean going vessel is normally distributed with a mean 12 and standard deviation 2. This is what we are given. And we are asked to find the probability that the time taken to load the vessel is A, less than 10 hours, B, between 10 and 12 hours, and C, greater than 15 hours. So to, to, to solve this, uh, let's, let's first put down the mean mu as 12 and the standard deviation sigma is equal to 2. These are given to us. From this, we can see that x equal to 10 will correspond to the z value of 10 minus 12 by 2, which is minus 1. x equal to 12 will become 12 minus 12 by 2 or z equal to 0. And x equal to 15 uh, will give us a z value of 1.5. Okay, now having these z values, what do we do? We can use the z table and calculate the area under the curve and thereby estimate the probability that we are looking for. So first let's take the problem. What is the probability that the time taken to load the vessel is less than 10 hours in the given problem? Now you can see that if you draw the normal distribution curve and mark the values of x, uh, 12 would be the mean and the probability that we are looking for would correspond to the area to the left side of the value 10. Uh, under the curve. And uh, so this is the blue shaded region that we are trying to now calculate the area for. So we write P of X less than or equal to 10 is capital F of 10, the cumulative probability of the value 10, which can also be written as phi of minus one. That phi ref refers to the cumulative distribution function of the Z variable, which corresponds to the, the F, uh, which, is, which stands for the X variable. So, f of 10 would be equal to phi of minus one because x equal to 10 corresponds to z equal to minus one. So now how do we estimate phi of minus one? Now first we recognize that phi of minus z is nothing but one minus phi of z. And this is because of the symmetry in the distribution. So recognizing this, we have to now estimate phi of one and the z table comes to our help. So in the Z table, we see that along the row headers, which are listed in the first column, are given the Z values to one decimal place. And the subsequent columns help us to refine that Z value to the second decimal place and look for the area. So you can see that the column headers here help us to extend the Z value to the second decimal place. And these values given inside the table are the areas under the curve which correspond to the respective Z values. So now we are looking for a z value equal to exactly one. And you can see that the area under the curve, the cumulative area, the cumulative probability, which corresponds to z equal to one, would be 0.8413. Hence, p of x less than or equal to 10 will be equal to one minus 0.8413, which is 0.1587. Hence, the probability that it will take less than 10 hours to load is 0.1587. Okay. Now let's do another example. The second question was, what is the probability that the time taken to load is between 10 and 12 hours? As you can see in this graph, the blue shaded region represents the area that we are looking for. So P of 10 less than or equal to X less than or equal to 12 is capital F of 12 minus capital F of 10, which is phi of zero minus phi of minus one, which we can then write like this, phi of zero minus within brackets, one minus phi of one, which then becomes phi of zero plus phi of one minus one. From the Z table, we can find out the values of phi of zero and phi of one, and they turn out to be 0.5 and 0.8413 respectively. So this 
summation comes to 0.3413, which means the P of X less than equal to, uh, P of X uh, greater than equal to 10, but less than equal to 12 is 0.3413. So the probability that it will take uh, between 10 and 12 hours to load our vessel is 0.3413. Going forward, the third question was, what is the probability that the time to load is more than 15 hours? So again, we, fi we find in the graph that the area corresponds to the area to the right side of 15, which is this area because it says more than 15 hours. So it's the area not to the left of 15, but to the right of 15. So we write P of X greater than or equal to 15 would be one minus P of X less than or equal to 15. Uh, P of X less than or equal to 15 is this capital F of 15. And therefore, what we are looking for is 1 minus f of 15, which is 1 minus phi of 1.5. From the z table, the, the area which corresponds to phi 1.5 is 0 0.9332. And therefore, p of x greater than or equal to 15 is 1 minus 0 0.9332, which is 0 0.0667. Hence, the probability that it will take more than 15 hours to load is 0 0.0667. So in this way, we've learned how to find the area under the curve given the values of x for a given normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Now we can also ask the question, is it possible to go backwards, go in the in inverse direction, and given the area, find the values of z? Of course, looking at the z table, you can make out that it's very much possible. So let's see how to do that with another example. In the same problem, let's ask the question, in how much time can it be expected to complete 95% of the loading? Okay, so we are loading the vessel and how much time will it take to complete 95% of our loading? And so if we were to do this, we are actually going from the probability or the area to the value of Z or X. In other words, given F of X, which is the same as phi of Z as 0.95, we want to find the value of Z, which is phi inverse of 0.95. Or in other words, we want to find the value of x, which is f inverse of 0.95. So we can first draw the graphs. And uh, the first graph represents the normal distribution for x. And the second one, the identical normal distribution for z. And you can mark the area which corresponds to roughly 0.95, which means this area is 95% of the area under the normal distribution curve. So we want to know now what are these values, this value of x and the corresponding value of z here, right? So to do this, we go back to the normal distribution. Uh, so we write z equal to phi inverse of 0.95. We take the z table and we look for the value 0.95 inside the z table. So as we examine this closely, we find that 0.95 is not exactly listed here, but we find the values 0.9495 and 0.9505, which are both close to 0.95 and are on either side of 0.95. So if we take these two values and look for the corresponding Z values, we'll see that one of them corresponds to 1.64 and the other one 1.65. So we can then take the average of these two values as Z equal to 1.645. So this is the Z value, which corresponds to the area 0.95. Now, how do we find X? So we recollect that the definition of Z is X minus mu by sigma, which implies that X equal to mu plus Z into sigma. Substituting the values, X becomes 12 plus 1.645 into two, which is 15.3. And then we conclude we can expect to complete 95% of the loading in about 15.3 hours or 15 hours and for 18 minutes. Okay, so in this way, we can use the Z table in both directions. Given the area, we can find Z values and thereby the X values or given the X values, we can find the Z value and the area of the probability. Now, we have another question to ask. Is the Z table the only way to find the areas under the curve, or is there any other way? Well, fortunately for us, there is another way as well, and that is even easier than this, and that is by using MS Excel. So now I'm going to show you how to use Excel to find the area under the curve for the same problem. So I'll switch to the Excel screen, and here we have MS Excel. So you can see here I've made a spreadsheet. Q 
here uh, at, at the top left corner, I have indicated the mu and sigma values. This can be changed if you wish to. Then I have a table in which I show how we can convert the, the x values into z values by applying the formula x minus mu by sigma. And then I have two other tables. In the first table, I'm showing how to calculate the area given x or z. And in the second, I am showing how to calculate x or z given the area. So first, let's take the given x. For example, we are, we are told x is less than or equal to 10. Now, to find the cumulative probability at 10, we can use the norm.dist function in Excel. The norm.dist function has a format like this. We need to give first the mean. You can see here, we first give the x value, which is 10, and then the mean which is 12, we indicate this, and then the standard deviation and cumulative. Cumulative means are we looking for the cumulative probability or are we looking for the probability density? So if we put true, we will get the cumulative probability. And therefore, I put x mean standard deviation and true. So putting the value of x as 10, the mean as 12, the standard deviation as 2, and the cumulative as true, I get this probability, which is the same as what I got from the normal distribution table. So in the same manner, I can compute the probability for x lying between 10 and 12. So here I have to subtract one cumulative probability from the other. So I take the cumulative probability for 12, x equal to 12 first, and then from it, subtract the cumulative probability for x equal to 10. And the difference gives me the area between the points 10 and 12. And finally, the third one, I need to calculate the area to the right side of the point x equal to 15. For this, I do one minus the cumulative probability. So you can see here one minus norm dot list of, uh, of, of, the, of the respective parameters. I have x equal to 15, the mean equal to 12, the standard deviation two, and then true. So this gives me the probability that I'm looking for. So in this way, using the norm dot dist function, uh, given the values of x, the mean, and standard deviation, I can calculate whatever probability I want. Now, if I want to do it through z instead of x, then Excel has a provision for that. Instead of using the norm.dist function, I used the function norm.s.dist. So you can see here, norm.s.dist. So here, I don't have to specify the x, the, stand, the mean, the standard deviation, and so on. I just have to specify the z value and then say true. Because when I calculated the z value, I already took into account the x, the mean, and the standard deviation. So here I'm using the norm.s.dist function, and I, I, I get the same values of probability that I got in this column. You can see here. Instead of linking these to the x, mu, and sigma, I'm just linking them to the z value given in this column. Okay. In the next table, I show how to go in the opposite direction. Suppose I take the cumulative area, I know the probability under the curve, the cumulative probability. So I, I just put in the probability and I use the functions norm.inv, inv, inverse, inv for inverse, norm.inv. And the parameters for this function are the probability value, that's the first thing, and then the mean and standard deviation. So if I use norm.inv, then I have to indicate the, the probability, the mean, and the standard deviation, and applying it for three different cumulative area values, I've shown how to calculate the x values, the values of x. But if I don't want x, I want z, then I have to use the function norm.s.inv. I have to insert an s in between like I did earlier. So norm.s.inv, and here, I only have to give the probability value, and with the probability value, I get the required z values. With the probability value, I get the required z values. So with this, we complete our understanding of the basics of using the normal distribution to compute and estimate probabilities. Thank you.